Our break from route redistribution is now done. We're right back at it with some RIP to EIGRP redistribution. And to make it a little more interesting, we're going to use the distribute list command to filter all of the routes some of the time and some of the routes all of the time. Uh, this lab does have a slightly different topology from the last one as noted at the end of the previous video. Please note routers 1 and 2 have a direct connection over the 172.12.123.0/24 network. Routers 1 and 3, 172.12.13.0/24, another direct connection. And routers 1 and 5 are still talking to each other over our Ethernet section, and they're on the 3110/24 network. Router 2 is advertising two loopbacks into our RIP domain, and let's take a look at those on the live equipment and we see them right there and we're going to put these into EIGRP. Now EIGRP requires a seed metric to be set and we have two different ways to do it and as we all know when there are two different ways to perform some major task in Cisco land uh, in order to do well in exam land we need to know both of them. We're going to take a look at both and I'll show you a good usage for each really. There's no right or wrong answer to you know which one of these two ways should I use uh, you just want to know them both for your exam the first one is actually to specify the seed metric at the end of a redistribute command so if we did redistribute rip right here uh, it is a legal command by itself however it's only going to work if you set the default metric command which is the other way to do it so if I was just going to redistribute rip command rip routes and that's it I might just say, you know what, I'm not going to do default metric, I'll just put the metric right here. And these should look awfully familiar to you by this point. And I'll just go with the classics here that I like to use. We'll use 255 there, one there, and then 1500 for the MTU, and that's it. So nothing wrong with this. But in this lab, I want to redistribute RIP commands, and I want to redistribute my connected interfaces on router 1. So what will happen here is, you could do right after this redistribute connected metric 154410 to 55 1 1500 and there's nothing wrong with that there's always the chance of a mistype and if you want the metrics to be exactly the same perhaps you want to set an overall default metric and that's what we're going to do now so I'm going to get rid of that command and we're going to go with default metric with a pesky little hyphen in the middle of it and the values are going to be exactly the same in the same order and we're done so now whatever redistribution I use it's going to use these metrics so I will do a redistribute rip and I don't have to put any domains or anything like that because right there's nothing there there's nothing there to put after rip there's no domain or anything we do have them in version 6 which is interesting we have processes uh, but with rip at IP version 4 level we just have rip so we'll do that and we'll do a redistribute connected and that's it so whilst we save those let's go down to router 3 and see if my route redistribution was successful and it's pretty darn successful we have three external routes we know the deal there we know those are routes learned by redistribution we know they're going to have an AD of 170 and we know all that stuff. We also on router 3 do have the 3110 route which makes sense from the topology we looked at at the beginning and that's it so that's an internal route. Router 3 has all the routes and now after I learn how to spell the word show we will take a look at router 5's table and we see all kinds of things here but again we see the one connected route between routers 1 and 3 showing up as an internal route and all the other routes the two learn from router 2 and the 123.0 network connecting 1 and 2 are learned as external routes. So everything is just fine then. But you know, we just got word from upstairs that the bosses don't want router 5 to see any of these routes. Stupid bosses. Anyway, let's jump right to that. We're going to use a distribute list to make that happen because we don't want to bring the adjacency down. We may have other routes later that we want router 5 to get from router 1, but right now we're being told we don't want them to get any of these routes. So let's make that happen. First off, you know what we got to do. You know we got to write an access list. And we're going to do a deny any, and that's it, because when the only line is deny any, the implicit deny never gets mentioned. So now we need to apply it to the interface and the protocol. And you think, what? Apply it to the interface and the protocol. 
Yeah, so let me show you the options for this. Pretty cool. Let's go, actually, I apologize. I should not have done it on this router. We actually want to do it on the one doing the redistribution. So let's do that instead. That's where we wanted it. And you were sitting there going, why isn't he doing it on router one? We need to do it on the one doing the redistribution. Now we're going to apply it to the interface and protocol. And let's go ahead with router EIGRP100, the command being distribute list. And then we're going to put our name or our word right now. And our number is five. And let's see, we've got in or out. So from router one's point of view, we are filtering outgoing routing updates. Got it. Now I'm being presented with just about every interface that's ever existed on a Cisco router, plus some protocols at the bottom. So which one do I want to use? Well, I'm already in router configuration mode for EIGRP100. So what I will do here is just filter it out the Ethernet interface. So in this fashion, I am actually filtering protocol and interface. So let's go over to router 5 and see if we need to clear our tables. Ah, there we go. I thought we might have a dual neighbor change there. We did. You can see 3110 gigabit ethernet is resynced, pure graceful restart because we started doing some route filtering. So hopefully, they've already been filtering. You can see they're totally gone. Now the adjacency is still there. That's what we like to see. And you can see the uptime is 54 minutes, 39 seconds. So the adjacency resynced rather than you know actually coming down and then coming back, going back up. So what should we do now? we should go to router 3 and make sure router 3 is still getting the routes because the boss has just told us, hey, cut off router 5. So let's go down to router 3 and do a show IP route EIGRP. And the great news is those routes have indeed been left the heck alone. So now the phone is ringing again. Let's go to the whiteboard and see what our bosses might want from us now. What they also want now is for us to filter a single route from router three's table. Just one. And they come to us and say, you know what? We don't want them to know about the 3110 route. We don't want them to know about that anymore from router one, but it should get the external routes. Hmm. So now we're filtering internal routes, but leaving external alone. Well, first off, can we do that? I hope so. But we also have some other questions here because we're gonna need a different ACL and we're going to need a bigger boat, and we're going to need a different distribute list. And the first and third options, the different ACL and the different distribute list, bring up these three questions. First, can we use more than one distribute list on the same router? Two, if so, can we use more than one distribute list in the same protocol configuration? And three, if we can do that, what's the net effect to all of our routing tables? Because if we go under router EIGRP100 right now, and we write a distribute list, and we don't specify an interface, perhaps? What happens to router five? Hmm, well, I'll tell you what, we're gonna find that at the beginning of the very next video.